Did you know that stress can affect motor function? Yes. The fact that you have been dropping stuff lately, fumbling with key locks, tripping over your own feet, or even losing your balance for no apparent reason, all can be related to stress. I'm Sin, and I've created Mind Your Matters at SAS Factor Fitness to help first responders, former athletes, weekend warriors, and fitness enthusiasts reconnect with themselves in order to achieve their optimal fitness goals physically, mentally, and spiritually. The mind, body, spirit trinity is key for connection to self and optimal fitness. We can't get physically fit until we adjust our mindset and relationship with ourselves so that we can embrace positive energy that sets us up to be successful in our efforts. So how is it possible for stress to have us tripping, literally? Well, first off, Overactive stress hormones affect the nervous system by shifting body resources to fight off danger. Adrenal glands release cortisol and adrenaline hormones in our body that increase our breathing and our heart rate. They change blood sugar, uh, which causes some changes in our digestion. And in acute stress, an event, this process happens pretty quickly. It's in the moment. But when stress is chronic, it's prolonged over weeks, months, or years, This process is ongoing, and the continuous activation of the nervous system can create a substantial drain on the body. Overactive stress hormones also have an effect on our emotional state, which incidentally regulates general motor function, like walking, coordination, balance, and strength. It also affects our fine motor functions, like reaching, grasping, turning, and pinching, things we do with our hands. Many first responders are aware of the fact and the effects that acute stress has on the body in critical incidents. The first thing to go in emergency situations when the body is under stress is fine motor skills. It's one of the first reasons first responders train so much to put those fine motor skills on as much autopilot as possible in an attempt to reduce the natural physiological effect stress and motor skills has during the incident. But what we don't think about is how our bodies react to long-term chronic stress when our stress levels are so high that it becomes normal, even though the body isn't functioning properly or optimally. What happens when that reduction in motor functions affects us daily and interferes with daily living activities as well as our ability and motivation to exercise? I mean, who wants to go for a run when you keep tripping as you walk? Who wants to lift weights when you can't hang on to your keys? Or who wants to get on a bike when your balance is off? I surely wouldn't. And on the days I felt like a clumsy mess, I absolutely didn't. When stress is a concept, is a constant, it can feel like there are more of those clumsy days when we're walking around in a fog and hardly any days when we feel competent, let alone motivated enough to move properly and effectively. So what can we do about it? Well, for starters, we can work on reducing stress. And no, not in the way people usually talk about reducing stress. Since we can't not work, we can't stop taking care of the people we're responsible for caring for, and we can't do those things, just stop doing the things that we do every day. How can we reduce the stress that's overwhelming us? Well, we can change our perspective. We can change the way we look at it and the way that we perceive the stressors we deal with. First, we can start a gratitude journal. Yes, I know, for many of you that sounds all woo-woo, but the truth is the average person has between 12,000 and 60,000 thoughts per day. And of those thoughts, about 80% of them are negative. 80% of the 60,000 thoughts we have every day are negative. And of those 80%, 95% of those negative thoughts are are on repeat each day. We've programmed ourselves to think these thoughts each day negatively. Care to hazard a guess as to how much negativity impacts the stress level? You get the picture. So changing that one thing in the morning to start your day can have a huge impact on how the rest of your day unfolds. Write down your thankful thoughts in a journal you can keep with you or on an app on your phone. That way you can check in throughout the day if you feel yourself slipping back into negative thought patterns. You can take a look at that, remember what's good in your life, and put yourself back on track to some positive thinking. Another perspective, or another perspective changer that can help minimize stress 
is to look at negative events and situations from a lens of what can be learned rather simply that experience sucked. If we focus on what we learned, we can give our mind something productive to do. Finding like finding solutions to better manage similar circumstances or even to avoid the situation altogether the next time. The mind likes to be productive. So we can use that to our advantage to reprogram it, to seek new, more positive uh, destinations, or we can allow it to go where it wants, which is generally going to be back to the 80,000 negative thoughts that we already programmed it in. So try to think about what we've learned and how we can change our situation and how we come to these situations in the future. Another way is breath regulation. It's also a great way to minimize the psychological response to stressful situations. Breathing the right way at the right time can be a game changer. The relaxation response is a technique developed by a Harvard Medical School cardiologist named Dr. Herbert Benson. It induces a state of profound rest, what has been described as profound rest that can be prolonged through meditation, yoga, progressive muscle relaxation, and deep breathing. Deep breathing involves inhaling through the nose, expanding the stomach, then exhaling through the mouth in a slow, deliberate manner over the course of about 10 seconds or more. In all honesty, most people do not breathe efficiently. Most of us do what is considered chest breathing. Our stomachs don't expand. Chest breathing is inefficient and contributes to increased tension in the body and thus feelings of anxiety. Think about it. How many times have we caught ourselves with our foreheads creased, our brows furrows, or our shoulders all the way up to our ears for no reason? We can get injections to stop that action, but the stress and tension that caused the action is still going to be there. So what do we really solve? If we take a few minutes each day in the morning, again in the afternoon, and then once more at night to stop what we're doing and breathe deeply for several minutes, you'll feel your body, your muscles, all that tension just release and start to relax. Doing this several times a day can help relieve tension you didn't even know you had. As we start to reframe stress in our lives, we can reduce the negative impact it has on us and free ourselves to have better control of our bodies and how they function. When our bodies begin to function better, it makes room for the fun in our workouts and physical activities to reemerge. This is Sin at Satisfactor Fitness reminding you to mind your matters.